Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life. I'm here today to talk about my recent and current reads. Uh, December has been a much slower reading month for me than November was, but I still have finished several books in the last uh, probably 10 days or so. And so I wanted to talk about uh, what I've completed and what I'm currently reading. So the first thing I completed in the month of December was Northanger Abbey. I ended up listening to this on audiobook and I'm really glad I did because I think the narrator really conveyed the um, sense of irony and satire that this book is infused with. This book was quite a bit different from other um, Jane Austen novels that I've read so far. Um, this book follows our protagonist, uh, Catherine Wallen. She's a young, naive girl. She goes to Bath with friends of the family. It's her first trip sort of out in society. Um, and there in Bath, she makes friends with another young lady um, who has a brother who uh, is sort of interested maybe in Catherine. And it just sort of pokes fun at the whole social scene um, at that time. This takes place in like sometime in the 1800s in England, of course. And so you you get that sense of humor about the social mores of the time, um, of the, the uh, structures around uh, how romance is conducted, you know, courtship and all of that. And then as the story progresses, other characters get brought in and, and Northanger Abbey comes into play much later in the novel than I expected it to. I thought this was going to be like a creepy novel and it really isn't, although Catherine is obsessed with um, sensational novels and gothic novels and that comes into play um, with another friend that she makes and she goes to this friend's house to stay in Northanger Abbey and she has all these preconceived notions of what it's going to be like to stay in this abbey and then it's going to resemble these gothic novels that she's been reading and so she makes a lot of assumptions that turn out to be not correct and gets herself into embarrassing situations because of it and it's very amusing. Um, I will say this is not my favorite Jane Austen book. It does not sing the way that Pride and Prejudice or Persuasion do to me, um, but I found it very amusing. I'm not sure if I had read this that I would have initially caught how sarcastic Jane Austen is being in this novel, but the narrator of the audiobook very much conveys that. So um, I would recommend uh, listening to this on audio. Um, I think that's a great way to get the full impression of what Jane Austen is trying to convey. The next book I completed was The Reckoning by John Grisham. Um, I buddy read this with Doris and Jacqueline. Um, this, I had not, like Doris and Jacqueline, had not read any John Grisham since, you know, the early 90s when he was extremely popular and I was in college and I read, you know, The Firm and Pelican Brief and all those popular ones that were made into movies. Um, and I very much enjoyed John Grisham back then, but then I just didn't, for whatever reason, I just didn't um, continue on reading him. Uh, my uncle had recommended this book to me, and then Jacqueline and Doris and I just decided to pick this one up and read it. And this is follows the story of a man named Pete, who is a uh, just returned from World War II, where he had been a POW. He comes home to, I believe it's Mississippi, Mississippi, yes, Mississippi, um, to resume his life with his wife and his two children on his farm. And one day, um, at the very beginning of the book, <clears throat> grabs his gun, goes to his church, and shoots his minister dead. And then turns himself in, basically, to the local law enforcement and refuses to speak anything more about it. So this book is divided into three sections. The first section deals with, you know, his this murder and the immediate aftermath in uh, late 1940s Mississippi, what happens to him in jail, how it impacts his family, uh, all that sort of thing. And then the second section um, takes us back to when Pete was in the war um, in the Pacific Theater in the Philippines um, and uh, becomes a POW and then later a guerrilla fighter in the Philippines. And then the last section um, is back to the present time of the novel um, and the um, aftermath of Pete's actions in murdering this minister. So you don't know this whole time why Pete has done this thing. And so you're trying to find out, or you're waiting to find out throughout the whole book. 
The last section of this book drove me absolutely bonkers. I thought it was terribly paced. It was just ridiculously drawn out. It was frustrating to the extreme, and I despised how it ended. I did not find it believable that events would have turned out the way they did. <laughs> And I just wanted to hock this book across a room. So I cannot recommend The Reckoning by John Grisham. Um, and I really wish that people who are very famous authors would still be edited by their editors because this book could have used a very substantial editing session. The next book that I finished was um, somewhat similar in subject matter, Just Mercy, The Story of Justice and Redemption by Brian Stevenson. This is a nonfiction book all about um, this man, Brian Stevenson, who formed an organization called the Equal Justice Initiative, where he, um, as a young lawyer, became interested in um, providing legal assistance to folks who were on death row. In some cases, um, had been... Uh, um, in prison for crimes they had not committed, in other cases just had not had appropriate legal um, legal help during their cases. Um, in most cases it's uh, black people or brown people that have been stuffed into prisons or put on death row without proper legal representation. And Brian Stevenson takes us through these issues using a case study of one particular man um, Walter McMillan, who is uh, accused of a crime that he did not commit and is stuffed into jail and put on death row um, and is on death row for quite a while um, before Stevenson comes into the picture and begins to um, try to get his case retried. And in amongst hearing about McMillan's case, Stevenson brings in other cases. There's a lot of information in here about um, how uh, young people are um, tried for crimes as adults and put into prison for life, um, you know, 13, 14 years old, and then stuffed into prison and treated abominably. It's very difficult to read um, at times. It's very emotionally um, impactful, really, really distressing uh, what is done to people in this country, especially to people um, of color in this country with the criminal justice system, although in a lot of cases they, he discusses white people as well, um, but it seems the the theme that comes up over and over again is if you're you're poor and you're a minority, um, you do not get the justice that other people get. So all the um, reviews of this book have been correct. It's very, very good uh, book to read. The writing is excellent. Um, the subject matter is difficult and that's why it took me so long to read. I started reading this book uh, in the end of November for nonfiction November and I just had to you know, read a section and then put it down and go on to something else and then come back to it just so that I could process all the information that Stevenson is laying out here and it was so enraging at places that I just had to be able to take a break and you know take a deep breath and then come back to it but highly recommend really really excellent look at our criminal justice system and all the places where we're still um, falling short of the mark in providing justice to people um, very important read I then finished um, an audiobook. Uh, the audiobook was Kingdom of the Blind by Louise Penny. This is the latest installment in the Inspector Gamache mystery series. It's number 14 in the series. Um, Inspector Gamache is a uh, police detective, head of the Charité, actually, um, in Quebec, Canada. Um, so he, uh, you know, gets involved in all these murders and other types of crimes. And in this particular case, he is, uh, Inspector Gamache, is um, brought in as the uh, uh, executor of a will of a woman that he's never met before, and he's trying to figure out why he was brought in um, to uh, this woman's will and her, basically, her, her life story. And so we're following all of that, as well as a um, continuing story from a previous book about um, the opioid uh, crisis in Quebec and essentially in the United States as well. They're tied together. I love these stories. They're police procedurals, but they have a lot of social um, uh, 
uh, context around them. Specter Gamache is an excellent character. I listen to these on audiobook because the narrator is particularly great um, uh, with the accents and the French words that are used. There's some French, you know, it's not in French, obviously, but there are some French vocabulary words that are used there, so it's great to have that pronunciation. Um, and there's a wide cast of characters who, of course, throughout the whole series we've been following. So if, uh, if you like a sort of more literary mystery, this is a great series to try. Um, and again, I would highly recommend starting at the beginning, although the very first book in the series, Still Life, is not great. So maybe skip it and start with book number two. If you're interested in contemporary police procedural set in Canada and written um, more in a literary style versus, you know, a straightforward plot, boom, boom, boom style. Um, the next book I finished was an essay collection, uh, No Time to Spare by Ursula K. Le Guin, Thinking About What Matters. Um, Ursula K. Le Guin is a science fiction, um, or was a science fiction author, very popular, uh, won a lot of awards. And this is a series of, uh, I guess, blog posts that she wrote just ruminating about lots of different subjects, you know, whether it be about her cat or about... Um, uh, the writing process or about aging, uh, Ursula K. Le Guin has a lot to share with us about her thinking and I find her to be, uh, I found her collection here to be very engaging, um, very profound, really hit home in a lot of places for me. She's writing um, in places about, uh, pol you know, how how politics impacts uh, society. She's writing about nature and how um, human impacts on the environment uh, are changing the world, you know, all of these sorts of topics, but written in a very engaging manner. Um, and I just love this collection. I'm so glad that Doris talked about it on her channel because it inspired me to pick it up when I saw it at the library. And I absolutely loved it. Um, if you're looking for a collection of essays that are, you know, two to five pages in length, um, that are really, uh, will get you thinking and be very entertaining. This is a excellent collection to pick up. So that's what I've read in the last uh, week or week and a half or so. Um, I am also uh, working on a few things. I'm still working on Not That Bad, the collection of essays about rape culture edited by Roxane Gay. Um, I'm still working on Grant, the biography by Ron Chernow. Um, and I've picked up two other books. In the meantime, I'm reading The Jungle uh, by Upton Sinclair on my Kindle. That's a classic that I read a um, long time ago, probably high school, I think, and it was very impactful to me at the time. All about the meatpacking industry in Chicago. The story is great, and the narrative, the story itself of the people involved, the immigrants that come to Chicago and then are forced to work in these horrific conditions in the meatpacking industry and to live in these horrific conditions in these slum houses and just the overall condition of Chicago at the time, um, where in the meatpacking meat district was just horrible. Um, and it made a big impact on me when I was a young person uh, to the point where it's been a book that I have, you know, remembered great details about throughout my life and for something that I read that long ago to still be something that I can call to mind is really says a lot about the book and I'm finding it even more um, impactful on the second read. The story still is very propulsive and moves along very well especially for a classic novel. I think it's really um, it's a book that's easy to read even though it is a classic. Uh, and then the uh, the social issues that Upton Sinclair is discussing are sadly still very relevant today. Um, and, and but it is disturbing to read about how um, the process of how uh, industrial food gets into the grocery store or gets onto your table. Um, so it's not for the faint of heart, I will say that, but I am enjoying it and I am reading that now, um, rereading that now because it is Robert at Barta Horde's pick for his classics, uh, his classics discussion for December. So um, that inspired me to pick it up again now. I've been wanting to reread it for quite a while. And then this morning I started a new audiobook. I started um, Columbine about the school shooting that happened in the late 90s. 
Um, and of course, this book has won lots of awards. It's been, um, you know, on all kinds of uh, best of lists. And I was not, I did not want to pick this book up for a long time because of the subject matter, because it is about a school shooting. And that's just a really difficult thing to read about, especially when you have kids in school um, in the United States. So I've sort of avoided it for quite a long time, but I keep hearing about what a great read it is. And I think that I am now far enough away from that time when Columbine happened that I am interested to read um, Dave Cullen is the author. I'm interested to read Cullen's take on it and I know he uh, did research and interviewed you know many many people over a period of 10 years to get the real story behind these two young men um, these two teenage boys who took guns into the school and shot up their school and killed so many people. Um, so I think I'm ready now to read it. And so I started the audiobook this morning and it's very engaging on audiobook. I have to say that so far I can see why it has, you know, really captured so many people's attention. The, the narrative um, is well, well done. And on audio, it's very compelling. So looking forward to continuing that um, on audio as well. And that should take me through the week. So that's what I've recently read and what I'm currently reading. I hope that you have all found some good books to read and hopefully some stuff that takes you away from the stresses of the holiday season. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. So until the next video, guys, I'll talk to you later.